Welcome to our short explanation and demonstration of how to properly whitelist domains and senders in Microsoft 365, formerly Office 365's Exchange Online Protection. Basically the module in Exchange that filters out what it thinks is spam or malicious mail. And you can see the results of that in the quarantine. So you can see here's one of my quarantines and almost everything here is correct. But there are a few you can see that I have released. Now there are four ways to whitelist senders. First is the mail flow rules, basically transport rules. The second is Outlook safe senders. The third is just to allow IP addresses from various senders that you know, well, various sender mail servers in particular. And the fourth is using anti-spam policies, specifically modifying them. What we're gonna show is the one Microsoft recommends, which is the mail flow rules, the transport rules. Now something very important to note is that a few months ago, Microsoft changed their filters so that if a piece of mail is detected by Exchange Online Protection as high confidence phishing or malware, it will be quarantined and there is no way for you to solve it. You are left with only one redress, which is to go into the quarantine, which you can see right here is security.microsoft.com slash quarantine. Anyway, so that change is a big deal. So let's get on with it. What you need to do is surf off to, look, we're gonna end up at admin.exchange.microsoft.com. But I always go through portal.office.com because it's just where everything is. So I go to portal.office.com and I click admin. Then I expand the servers, which we'll get to in just a second here. There it is, show all. And you'll see here, there's the exchange server. And I will the exchange admin center to be specific. And bingo bongo, let's go to the rules under mail flow. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. So there we are. You can see these are my rules. Uh, I've just redone my whitelisting of domains because I was using an older methodology, which I'll just show you here on the right hand side, which uses some regex expressions. It's a complex system that we don't need to use anymore because they have a better rule for it now. So let's get to it and show you how to do it properly. All right, so it's easy enough to do, but there are a couple of things that aren't obvious. In fact, that most people don't do that Microsoft strongly recommends you do do, and so do we. Click the plus in the top left-hand corner and select bypass spam filtering. Then when it comes up, call it something. I'm gonna call mine whitelist DOMS December, 2021. And I wanna apply this to a sender that has the domain. So I select domain is, and in here, you put in whatever domains you want. There's a couple of things to note. One is if I put in, let's say eBay is stuff gets getting blocked, right? Because they're kind of spammy to start with. You think, oh, I've got it done. That's great. I'll click OK. Yeah, nothing happened. See here it says enter words. Yeah, we're, well, why didn't eBay get added? Well, you didn't click the plus. So let's click on that. And we'll just add a couple of others. Say you're in Europe. You might want to pass those guys. CNN, whatever you want, whatever your heart desires. I've got three uh, companies here that were three domains that we're allowing through. Now, the problem with that is these domains can be spoofed. So this is one of the two things that really aren't obvious. And then there's a, a third thing we're going to show you about prioritization. So let's get to it. You want to add another condition. What you want to do here is select a message header includes these words, any of these words and then select enter text. And what you need to put in there is authentication results. Now it's important to get these things exact. So I'll put a link in the top right hand corner right now that takes you off to a web page with all of these instructions. So you can just copy paste these terms because it's a pain to type them up by hand. Okay, I'll click okay. And the words that you need to have in the authentication results are dmarkpass, 
or best guess. So let's click OK and read what that says. If the domain is coming from CNN, Orange, eBay, and you notice that's and, not or, that's and, the anti-spam systems have marked this header as not being spoofed, which is what these are, then do the following. Set the spam confidence level, and it's set to bypass spam filtering. Now, if you actually look at a message header, you'll see it actually gets set to minus one, and minus one is bypassed. And you think, oh, now we're done. Well, it could be, but there's a little bit more you should do. Uh, Microsoft recommends, I think you probably should as well, although this one's a little less important. Let's click Add Action, and we're looking for Modify Message Properties. We want to set a message header. We want to add something to the header here. So let's click on that. The entry we want to set is X-ETR. Click OK. And this will make sense to you in just a second. Value we want to put in there is, well, you can put anything you want. But basically, I want to know when I'm looking at the message header of a piece of mail that came through, if it came through because I whitelisted it. Now, I can just look to see if the spam confidence level is minus one. But having some text isn't a bad idea. Bypass spam filtering, and I'm going to call this uh, white list DOM so I know which rule in particular was used. And when I did it, and I'll put my name so I know it was me and not one of my texts. So I can go yell at myself. Click OK. So now, if mail is coming through from whatever domains I have, and they are most likely not being spoofed, then set the spam confidence level to minus one, which means bypass and add something to the header so I can look at an inbound email in the future and know how it got past our filters. Let's click Save. There's two things left to note here before we're done. The first is, you'll notice I have a rule here that says blacklist these attachments type, types. So look, if you're sending through batch files or com or exe or JavaScript or whatever, I'm going to block them. And you'll also notice that there's a setting here that says stop processing more rules. So, if I want mail from these companies to come through and allow those type of attachments, I really have two choices. One, I can just move it to the top. or I can move this rule up in priority. You see it's a priority nine. And I can use the upper to do it, but that's really slow and uh, pokey. So, I'm just going to double click on it. And I'm going to change the priority to four. And you'll see why in a second. All right, so you'll see here now that I have a rule that says whitelist uh, these DOMs and well, we've been through that, so you know what's gonna happen. But I don't have, and it's now above this blacklist attachment types. Uh, the problem is it's still, I can tell you, this is still going to block email from these domains, even though they're whitelisted, if they contain those attachments or they're blocked by any of these other rules. And the reason for that is I don't have anything in here that says stop processing rules that are lower than this one. That's easy enough to fix. Just double click on it, scroll down and click stop processing more rules. Now I'm going to turn that on for a second. And in case you're wondering, you'll see that I've been cutting out this uh, delay here for please wait because you've got better things to do than sit and stare at my screen. So yours will take eh, 20 seconds on each of these. At least if it's like mine, my Office 365. There we go. And I've got the and stop processing more rules. Now, in my case, I actually don't want to do that. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so that's domains. Let's whitelist some specific people, not just the domains. So if you're trying to let somebody through that's, say, on Gmail or Yahoo or, God forbid, AOL or Outlook.com, for instance, well, you're opening up all of the Gmail and Outlook stuff. Bad idea. Don't do that by domain. So what you do is you click the plus, click the drop down, I should say. Bypass spam filtering. Call it something. So that's what I'm going to call mine. And I want to apply this rule if the sender is this person. And here it's going to pull up a bunch of people that are in my address book which I've obviously grayed out because I don't want you to look at my address book, but you get the idea that shows you the address book and think, well, how can I let somebody specific through? It's not a problem. Just type the address in here. So I'm going to say I want to let my buddy John Ripple through and he has a Gmail account. Just click OK. And there it is. You see it got added. 
And I could add more. So I could add in uh, Lucy, and she has one of those nice, awesome addresses with the number in it. And you can see I can just add them in. And set the spam confidence level again to minus one, which is bypass spam filtering. And you may want to add in that rule that Microsoft suggests, which is to add something to the message header. So message header. And the text of Ian whitelisted this email address. <laughs> there we go. And I could click stop processing more rules. We've already explained that. I won't do it because I'm actually just going to delete this one as soon as this little course is done. And lastly, let's show you how to whitelist by content. So we'll do bypass spam rules, call it something. So here we want to select the subject or body. So in my case, I might just want to do the subject if the subject includes these words and if you look at this and think well, what's a text pattern versus word it's possibly quite a lot but for most people not much a text pattern is using regex and if you don't know what regex is don't worry about it just ignore it just stick to using words so let's say that the subject line in my case is what i'll put in here and on my subject line will put in uh, offer so if the subject includes the word offer or it includes the word arrangement Remember to click the plus and then click OK. Set the spam confidence level, again sets it to minus one. And once again, you can add header information if you wish. Modify message properties, set a message header. You get the idea here, x dash etr, whoops, etr. There we go, click OK, click OK. And once again, the two things that I have to be cognizant of are where these are in the priority list, if that makes a difference. In my case, it doesn't because, well, for one, I'm just gonna delete them. And for another, I do want all of these other rules to apply anyway. But again, if I was concerned that I really wanted these senders to get through no matter what they sent, I would double click on it. I would probably set the priority to, you know, one and I would select stop processing. In fact, let's just do that. And you can see that moved it up to the top and I have stop processing more rules. So once that goes, once it hits this rule, if it's anything from John Ripple or my buddy, uh, uh, Lucy Jacobs, whatever they send me, we'll get through. Now, like we said at the start, the exception to that is if the message is identified as being high confidence phishing, and yes, high confidence actually means something, by the way, if Microsoft is very sure this is phishing, or it contains malware, it is going to be quarantined regardless of what you set up here. So you still have to look at your quarantine. So you think we'd be done, but no, there's one more thing we need to do. However, it's a big enough issue. We're going to set it as a second video. Microsoft is changing, or by the time you're watching this perhaps, has already changed the way that users get notified of quarantine items and where you set up those rules. So it's not rocket science, but it is complex and it's gonna take us five or six minutes to get through that. So I'll put a link in the top right hand corner. If you're interested in that, click it. If you're not going to notify your staff or control the quarantine, you're done. Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like below uh, or, or and if you would click subscribe. They both really help with the Google algorithms. Also, if you have a question or concern, put it in the comment section below where you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.